time for the opener's open. This is a challenge put on by SW Dweeb. I'll put a link to his channel down below. Basically, he said, hey, everyone out there, make a bottle opener. Here's mine. It's a 3D print. Uh, you might think that's a really weird looking bottle opener. Well, it's four bottle openers, and I printed them all together with runners and gates. The bottle opener itself, pretty standard. I modeled it on uh, Fusion 360. I'll put a link to the file. I'll put the file on my mini factory. Uh, just one bottle opener file. I don't have a file for this whole deal. I like modeled this part, and then I modeled these, and then I modeled the this, and then I stuck them all together in the slicing program and printed it that way. Because apparently I am too stupid to figure out how to do that in Fusion 360 accurately. But let's move on from that and talk a little bit about the gating, which I have printed in place. So I'm going to ram this up in the sand, much like I've done before recently, uh, to get the good surface finish. Where is the rest of my stuff? There it is. So we got the tapered sprue in gate. This is obviously, this is going to be in the bottom, in the drag. This will go in through the cope. It'll go down the tapered sprue into this, run across. I'm going to do my makeshift, not really good spin trap, surge trap, whatever. Uh, so it'll go into that and fill up as it's overflowing into each one of these. I've done that recently with the hammer and the bowl, and they work pretty good. If you remember the bowl? Yes. Yes, the nice bowl. But these are a different size from this, and that brings me to an interesting point. So, if you've seen the ones recently that SWD posted with Bob Puhaka, he talked about uh, the cross-sectional area. So you want the cross-sectional area of this to line up with the cross-sectional area of this. You get less turbulence that way when it when the flow goes from here to here. Uh, then he said, I believe, I could be wrong about this, so someone correct me if I'm wrong. It flows into this, and then there's the surge trap, spin trap dealie, and then it splits off into these four. And I think, I think, he said, the best way to, to prevent the turbulence is if you add up the cross-sectional area of these four, the cross-sectional area should equal total the same as the one runner. So the metal has to flow in through this, cross-sectional area of that should match this, should match these four times four, because there are four of them. Now this cross-sectional area is not exactly the end of that, but this is tapered, so if I shove it into the sand a little more, the bottom of that will be similar to the cross-sectional area of that, and then I'll just fill that divot in with sand and nobody will know. You heard nothing. Uh, the cross-sectional area of these four put together is probably 50% more than the cross-sectional area of this thing here. So uh, that's not real great. That's kind of a fail, but I'm going to ignore that. Carry on regardless as I've been doing. I also do not know if these little holes will release from the sand. When I modeled this, I was not able Whatever process I used, I was not able to uh, make the program give me draft on the whole thing. But I did round off the edges, and this is pretty thin. So uh, and the runners all have draft. Mm, I put the hole in for two reasons. One, keychain. You know, keychain ring can go through there, and you have this on your keychain. Uh, and second, I don't want a big fat chunk here and then a thin chunk. You know, thin, fat, thin. I kind of wanted, I was hoping that would get rid of some of the potential for shrinkage right there. Although... The whole thing is the same thickness this way, so that might totally be a moot point. You know, my idea is you have this on a keychain, and then like, you know, if you need to open a bottle, you pull out, you got your, you got your keys held in, in these two fingers, you're holding it right here, you know, these fingers under here, this thumb here, bottle, right? I don't know if that's going to work or not. Um, I should probably use this opportunity to mention I don't really drink anything other than black coffee and water, and those don't come in bottles with bottle caps. So I might have to go to the store and buy a bottle of something just to test this out. I really hope I get four of them, though. That's the challenge. This is not a particularly cool bottle opener, although I didn't model it from scratch. Uh, I'm hoping the challenge here for me will be getting four good castings all at once with printed runners and everything. So that's the challenge here for me, hopefully. I'm going to coat the sand with this afterwards to hopefully give me a better surface finish. And I'm going to stop blabbing because I don't have anything else new to say. So I'm just going to start uh, ramming this up, eh?
And since I'm doing this alone to the sound of zero music, I might as well ramble a little bit. I've been noticing a lot of questions popping up in the comments. Is it time for another Q&A kind of thing, kind of video? I did one of those, I think, two years ago, one year ago, long time ago. Uh, and I didn't do another one because I like, I prefer videos where like I make something and not just stand here talking. You know, the making things while I'm talking is a little more my, my style. I'm always nervous to put out that kind of stuff too because like I'm not an expert so I'd, I don't know that I should be saying, hey, ask me questions and I'll answer them. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, tell me what you think. Also, I'm thinking of doing a stream this weekend since it's a little longer and I have a little more time. Let me know if that works for you, if you're going to be busy. If you're in the U.S., it's Memorial Day weekend, so it's like a family thing. Uh, everyone gets together and barbecues. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe Saturday. Maybe that can be the Q&A. That way you can see me live and unedited how much I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's see, which side to go in? I think here goes in. And then I'm going to elevate this like I have been. Elevate this side up, this side down. So the metal fills this first, then the spinny thing, and then has to go uphill to fill these. Really need a new one of these. This one, the, the mesh is tearing out. By new one, I of course mean I'm going to have to sneak back into the kitchen and steal another one of these things. I mean, I didn't steal this one from my wife, and then another one later to screen clay. So this is interesting with the, the bottle openers to pop the tops open. They, of course, make those twist-offs. You know, I was once tasked by my dad to open a twist-off bottle for him. And I thought, eh, I have calluses on my hand, why not grab, twist? You know, they kind of, they, they catch, and then you, you know, you give them a little tug, and then they release, and then, whoop, and they come off. Right, easy peasy, that's how bottles work. Well, I went to remove it, and I went to twist it off. It's, it was kind of tight, and I gave it a good, solid tug. And I felt it release, and then twist and easy, and then I let go, and the bottle, the cap was still on, like tight. I'm like, what's what's going on? I should also mention I was in a hot tub at this time, so like my hands were all wet, and you know your your skin gets soft when when it's all wet like that and wrinkly. Well, I went to grab it again to, to twist off the top because clearly I was stupid, and uh, it didn't it didn't release. I just I was I was making it up in my mind. Well. Here's a lump of something in my sand. Well, then when I went to grab the lid again, it felt weird, like there was an extra, like a tag there or something. So I let go, and I looked at my hand and realized the bottle cap never released, and there wasn't a tag on it. There was a flap of skin from my hand. That's what released. I went to, to twist it off, and it had those sharp ridges, and it, like, caught and then dug right through the flesh into my thumb. So that little tag that I felt that was getting in the way was actually a large piece of nearly severed thumb skin. And from then on, I never used my hand to open a twist-off bottle cap. True story. Okay, the out gate has a ring around to stop when the, when the metal comes out. Because I nearly lost a flask last time to the buyer. And this, again, it, raising up the pouring spot is not for head pressure. A lot of times people want the extra height because then the weight of all the metal in the height pushes it down and forces it into the mold. And I'm sure that happens to some extent. But I'm really doing this because I want to pour the flask in level. I don't want to hold it up here and dump and have the metal drop and get all turbulent in there. No, no. I want to hold it down the top of the, or the, top of the crucible as close down here as I can and just tip it in to reduce turbulence. And I still have the tapered sprue former in there. So I'm just going to try to build up a, a pouring basin around that, which one day I might be able to record so you can actually see what I'm doing. But for right now, I don't know how to do that. Easy now. It's like playing a game of Operation, which coincidentally I have never played in my life. And the family hanging out and laughing and oh no, he accidentally touched the side and oh, the patient's dead. Isn't that a good time? Never once played it. Not sure I've ever played a game of Monopoly to, to its actual conclusion either. Just got to the point where everyone got sick of playing it and left. Or is that, is that the point of Monopoly? That might, that might be the actual point. I suppose if this fails, I'm just going to have four chunks of aluminum 
and I'm just going to use the angle grinder to carve some bottle openers out of it. Why didn't I do that to begin with? That sounds way easier than this. Do you want your Petrobon soft as a baby's bottom? Then use whatever brand talc that is. Oh, oh no, drop the thing. Ah, these holes didn't fully release like I wanted, but that's fine. Here I am, just cleaning out all the ridiculous amounts of talc that I put in there. That was potentially a very bad idea. But hey, what else is new, right? Should be the motto of my YouTube channel. Welcome to Paul's Garage. Potentially a very bad idea. Okay, I also want these to be vented, allowing air to escape. This is just a filler rod, a TIG filler rod with a, a sharpened tip on it. Lastly, you'll probably remember this from the bowl. I'm going to stamp my maker's mark in each one of these. There, those are not at all centered, but who cares? That means this is all done, time to fire up the grill. Well, there's an oops moment. I think I got away with it though. Nothing exploded. And now we wait. Oh, this is heavy. Ugh. All right, place your bets. Did it work or did it not? <laughs> oh yeah, that worked. Looks like all four came out good. Here, there we go. Cool, check it out. Even the stamp came out. Cool, the little holes didn't though. But you know, you can't win them all. So I guess now I just have to cut these off and clean them up a bit. All right, there's the first one, just roughly angle grindered the flashing away and uh, it cleaned up some of the edges a little bit and probably drill a hole in there later but there we go now the ultimate test will it open a bottle special delivery straight from my parents this is a bottle of ting from their their fridge that's been in their fridge for like eight years they brought it back from Jamaica the Jamaican grapefruit drink I used to love this stuff and as Jamaican easy it sounds it's made by Pepsi so it's maybe not perhaps as authentic as you might think, although the stuff is everywhere there and I did drink it thoroughly. So, bottle opener, bottle. This is not a twist off. Uh, we're going to see if it works. Clip it under, pull up, correct? All right, drum roll please. I feel like I need a more epic background for this. Um, too bad, I don't have one. Maybe declutter it a little? Nah, whatever. All right, will it open in three, Two, one. I probably shouldn't drink this, right? I mean, it's so old. Okay, three, two, one, go. Eh. What the? Three, two, one. Eh. And oh, it's hissing. Hissing. Can you hear it? It's eight-year-old carbonation. Three, two, one. Er. What? This bottle opener sucks. Er. What about this one? I think. I think I made them too small. See, this is what happens when you don't have a bottle opener laying around to model or any bottles to, to test. What about the 3D print? The 3D print, oh, that works. How does this work and the metal ones don't? What crap is that? Anyway, there you go. Opener's open. I 3D printed the weirdest bottle opener ever and then cast some bottle opener looking things that are worthless. Join me next time when I fail again. Should I, should I try it? This is like, see if there's a date on here. Uh, March. Oh, two. I don't think it was that old. Jeez. That's like, I know people who are like driving who were born after this bottle was made. I wonder how it tastes. Tastes like ting, like I remember. It's a very flat. I'm not going to drink the rest of this.